This is my vintage snowmobile and ATV collection. Just kind of wanted to show this off a little bit and kind of explain a little bit on where some of these came from, a little bit of the backstory behind each machine. Let's start over here. So these are 1989 Honda Pilots. Uh, the one on the right is actually all stock. So these are 400 two stroke, fully automatic, forward and reverse, electric start on them. Uh, story on this one, I came across it on Craigslist and the guy, actually I noticed in the pictures he had another one in the background and started talking to him. Turns out he ended up having three of them all together plus a 28 foot enclosed trailer and some paddles and parts and a bunch of other things. So I ended up buying the whole lot. I ended up selling off two of the pilots and then kept this one. This one was the nicest one of the bunch. It's all original, still has original tires and wheels on it and stuff. It, only real thing kind of aftermarket was uh, the accessory fuel tank on it. The one on the left here is a little bit different. This one actually has a 670 Skidoo motor in it. So instead of about 40 horsepower, it's got about 100 some now. This one's super fun. It's just got a crazy amount of speed for what it is. The downside is it likes to shred belts. Story on this one, I actually traded this one in on a razor. All the work had basically been done to it before I got it. I haven't really gotten to drive this one a ton yet. I kind of want to do a few other things with it. These are kind of unique where with the snowmobile engine in there, they actually end up using jet ski carbs on it instead of the snowmobile carbs because they're a lot more compact. I can't really see it very well there. Up and on the top here, we got a couple Kawasaki. So on the right, we've got an 85 Kawasaki Takati 3. Story on this, I actually bought three of these together, kind of from the same guy. This one was actually originally red to begin with, but the red plastics were really faded. And I had a set of green plastics that were brand new, and I thought if I'm going to keep a Kawasaki, it kind of needs to be green. So I ended up selling the other two off, kept this one. Pretty similar story on this Takati. I bought this one as kind of a package deal with a couple ATC 250Rs, a couple TRX 250Rs, a 350X. I ended up selling all that stuff off and then kept the Takati because these you just don't see very often at all. This one's still kind of a project. I've had it running, but it's kind of got an air leak or something. It's kind of funny where it's got kind of no bottom end and then once it finally revs up and goes, it really moves, but it seems like it's got some sort of air leak or something. And so that's on my to-do list to kind of go through that whole motor and everything. Down here, I've got an 87 TRX 250R. This one I bought not running. Uh, I didn't have spark when I got it. Also, it still had the white plastics on it, but all the blue stuff wasn't there. Uh, that was all black. I recovered the seat on it. I put new decals on it too. Story on this one with no spark, uh, these CDIs were just really notorious for going bad on the, the three-wheelers and the four-wheeler 250R versions. Um, and then on this one originally I bought just kind of an aftermarket CDI for it. It got spark. Uh, downside to those things is they just, uh, I'd get a lot of kickback on it when you try to start it. And it just ran like crap, especially on the top end. Um, so on one of the forums I saw, somebody was talking about they would bake the CDI in the oven for a while and all of a sudden they would work, which I had two OEM ones sitting here and decided to try that. And I threw the thing in the oven at like 400 degrees for about 20 minutes and then threw it in here and had spark again and ran it. It's been running in there ever since. And it's lasted probably a couple years now. And it's amazing the difference between the OEM CDIs and the aftermarket ones. No more kickback at start. It revs so much smoother and higher RPM and stuff. It's been amazing. This is an 85 Yamaha Tri-Z. This one I actually traded in on a Polaris Ranger. The guy was looking at a Ranger and kind of saw all my other vintage stuff and kind of asked if I'd be interested in a Tri-Z. I was like, oh, sure, maybe. Thinking it was probably just junk or something or pretty beat up. And then he showed me some pictures of it. I was like, wow, this thing's like restored and great and yeah basically it had been fully restored but the guy just 
you know, really only ran it a couple times up and down the street every once in a while. And that was basically it. And it was just sitting there and trying to trade this thing in. It's been, I really haven't had done a single thing to it. And then to the left here, this is my 86 ATC 250R. This one I've had the longest out of everything in the bunch. I've had this one for probably at least about 10 years or so, probably a little longer. Um, similar story on this one, C or Lost Spark. I had an aftermarket CDI in it forever and it, it ran okay, if not really not great at all anyway. Um, yeah, it ran okay. And what I ended up doing on it was uh, putting the OEM CDI in it after I had baked it. I had two of them and they both came back to life and both worked great again. And this thing's night and day difference with the right CDI in it. It's so much more fun to drive, starts so much easier, so much better power. This is an 86 ATC 250SX. Um, this one I actually just found kind of locally on Facebook. Story on it was just kind of, I think I was like probably 80 something that owned it. Pretty much a one owner. And then I guess his son made him sell it or something because thought he was too old to be driving a three wheeler. Um, overall, it's in really good shape. There is kind of one crack on the headlight, which I guess he tipped it once. and But it was pretty much his little mail getter he'd just use it drive down the lane and stuff and that was about it those are still the original tires on it and i've got an 85 350x here this one once again just kind of bought privately it was just kind of a good deal unfortunately it wasn't a package deal or anything like that just kind of bought this one outright kind of wanted a 350x and this one seemed to be pretty clean and didn't really need anything it's also still got the stock exhaust on it, so it's nice and quiet. These are definitely fun to ride. They're just real smooth power, especially compared to the two strokes. Yeah, I've got a few little ones here too. This is an 86 Yamaha four zinger. These are 60 CC. This one, I did recover the seat on it. Um, I did put new decals on it. Other than that, there's still the original plastics and everything. And then we've got an 85 Suzuki ALT50 Trail Buddy. Um, this one, I still need to do some work on this one. I've had it running, but it's not the best idler. It's a little hard starting and stuff. I kind of figured if I actually have a kid drive it, I'm going to need to do a little bit more work on it and make it a little bit more reliable. But they're pretty unique. They're so tiny compared to all the other machines. And I've got a bunch of snowmobiles too. So this one, this is probably the most fun snowmobile in the fleet. This is a 1981 Skidoo Blizzard 9500. This one normally had a 440 liquid cooled motor in it. Uh, this one actually now has a 583 from like a 96 MXZ. It's been clutched and it's got bigger carbs on it and stuff. Studded track. It, it's got a lot of power for for what it is in this chassis and stuff. It's a lot of fun to ride. This one here is a 79 Skidoo Blizzard 9500, also a 440 liquid cooled. Kind of the story on this one, I actually had this one, bought it running, I've had it for a long time. It kind of sat outside, back behind the garage for a while. And then when I finally decided to move it over here and mess around with it, basically found out the motor had water in it somehow and it was basically stuck. So my plan was always to put a big motor in this one and I had like a 617 sitting around for a while. I was going to put that in this one and then I bought that one instead, which kind of cured that project itch. And then the crazy thing was, is this one still came with the original motor. So the 440 that was in this yellow one is now in this one again. So that one's running and then behind it, we've got an 81. Skidoo Blizzard 7500. So this is kind of the small version of the three. These are a 340 liquid cooled. Twin pipes and stuff. This one, just found it locally on Facebook and stuff. It was just kind of a good deal and seemed clean and stuff. And it, it's a really good runner. Never really had to do anything to this one either. Nice and fun. Up on the top here, this is a 1980 John Deere liquefier. I've always liked the looks of these liquefiers. Uh, this one I bought, not running. Needed the carbs gone through and stuff. I put a new windshield on it and then recovered the seat as well. 
These actually have a Kawasaki motor in them. Just the same motor that's in this one. This is an 81 Kawasaki Invader 440. So that's the same 440 liquid cooled motor. Uh, this one I actually bought up in, Wis or up in Minnesota when I was up there for a vintage snowmobile event. Yeah, those I've always kind of liked the body style of those Kawasaki's and I always wanted to add one to the collection. Then I've got a couple other snowmobiles and these guys here. These are ones I'm selling right now in 84. 200X, this is one that came along with some other four wheelers and stuff. It was kind of all pulled apart and in a pallet. I actually had another video on it kind of showing the assembly. So check that out. Um, this one basically kind of just freshened up, made it look a little nicer. I like the newer color scheme, so went with that instead of the 84. And a Quadzilla, this one I'm selling too. This one, I'd like to keep one of these, but don't really have a spot for it on the shelf anymore. So, this one's going to leave. I think I got something else coming though to replace it. And then over here, I got a 79 Polaris TX 340. These are uh, 340 air cooled motor on this this one i traded in with it came with an 81 txl 340 traded those in on a side by side got both those running both of them just needed carb stuff done pretty much and this one i've always liked this body style and color scheme and so this one decided to stay here and then this is a 1970 polaris mustang it's a 400 if I remember right. Um, this one I've never actually tried to get running. It it turns over fine. It's got spark and compression. I gave it a little shot of some carb cleaner once and it popped off and ran for a little bit. And So I know it won't take a lot to get going, but I've just never really gotten around to it yet. And on top here, this is a 75 Suzuki Fury. These were a one year production model kind of the story on these is they're an arctic cat chassis uh, with basically a suzuki motor and electronics and everything uh, these were considered the fastest production sled in 75 it's a 440 free air motor stock twin pipes um, i actually had a handful of these over the years originally I had two of them that were i was always going to make into one good one and they sat back in the corner over there. It was one of the original hoods for it. But uh, they were pretty much junk. Never really got around to it. And then just randomly about a year ago or so, a pair of these popped up on Facebook. A few blocks from the shop pretty much. And I ended up buying them and got both of them running. Kept this one, sold the other one. And yeah, but they're pretty unique. The paint scheme's kind of neat on them. It looks like a bass boat. They're super flaky, metallic -y paint. Got a couple more vintage ones over here on this side. This is a 1966 Skidoo Olympic 250. Uh, I've got another video showing the whole story on this one. Originally, I bought this one mainly just to get running, and then I kind of just went off the deep end on it, did a full restoration on it, got it all running again. And I've got a matching trail behind to that Polaris Mustang. So I bought these together as a pair. That's a 1970. They're just pretty unique looking machines. And this was the first snowmobile I ever bought. This was a 1980 Moto Ski Grand Prix Special. These are basically identical to a 5500 Blizzard. 500 fan cooled. Uh, this thing was pretty much in perfect shape when I bought it, but I was, I don't know, probably in eighth grade or something when I bought it. Had like 500 miles on it. Kind of rode the crap out of it in high school and everything. And eventually put a different track and suspension underneath it, which that was nice. And then at one point it kind of bumped up against a tree and cracked the hood. So then I decided I was gonna paint it black. That's how I ended up black, but this one's gonna get a restoration again and go back to the original orange color and Try to make it roll nice again yeah that's pretty much my vintage collection so i don't know please like and follow and i'll try to post more stuff along these lines and other unique things